Hi, this is Brian Lazar with the Colorado Avalanche Information Center, and welcome to your weekly Avalanche Outlook. Let's start by uh, taking a jump to the homepage map where you can see that we have now gotten to moderate or level two of five Avalanche Changer in all 10 of our forecast zones. As we've noted in previous broadcasts, there is a spectrum of conditions which exist at any avalanche danger rating. And right now we are at the higher end of moderate. So moderate danger does not mean safe. We still have a worrisome snowpack structure on particular aspects and elevations. Here, this graphic is showing avalanche activity for the last week, and all of those signs are gradually waning. We're seeing a lot less cracking, a lot less collapsing, and avalanche activity has dropped off quite a bit. So if we look at this graphic, you can see here on the avalanche rows that most of our avalanches are still running on northerly and easterly facing slopes. Uh, the natural avalanche activity has wound down, and you can see from March 10th through the 13th, which coincided with some fresh snow and an uptick in an avalanche cycle, We've seen a gradual downward trend uh, through the latter part of this week. So this image kind of shows our current avalanche problems. We're dealing with a persistent slab avalanche across all of the state. The distributions are slightly different here or there, but this pretty much captures it. We're covering these northerly and east facing slopes. We've got avalanches that are possible to trigger. And if they do, they're going to be large to very large. So notice that the sizes have bumped up. As we've added more storm snow to the storm uh, to the snowpack, we've built a thicker slab, and this slab is now producing larger avalanches, which are connecting across terrain features. And if I show you some avalanche images from just last week, you'll see this. So this is an avalanche that was just triggered yesterday uh, near the snowmass area in the Aspen zone. Um, this was triggered on uh, Thursday morning, and this is a northeast slope near Aspen as well. Um, here's some big, broad breaking avalanches along the front range zone near Bertha Pass. So you can start to see that these avalanches are connecting more terrain features, breaking through rocks and breaking quite wide in some cases. Here's another example of that kind of fracture line breaking through rocky terrain and wider than many people would expect. This one just outside of Crested Butte. This one is down near um, Red Mountain Pass in the North San Juan zone. So you can see that the avalanche size growing and the slabs connecting across the terrain is becoming pretty widespread across most mountain areas. Uh, here's an avalanche that ran in last week in the South San Juan zone. Steamboat zone, which has seen relatively little avalanche activity compared to most of the state has got in on the action with this last storm event. And here's an avalanche that broke place in the Sawatch range just in the last few days. And then here's one uh, just on the west side of Loveland Pass across from Arapaho Basin. So these avalanches provide really good examples of the kinds of avalanches that you can trigger as we move into the weekend and into early next week. So the only thing that's really changing is a couple rounds of fresh snow. Uh, this is a model run, um, which will show you snowfall that came in on Wednesday, and then we get a little break and our next system rolls through on Monday as a closed low pressure system that rolls through the Four Corners area. There's a lot of uncertainty with what's gonna happen with snowfall on Monday. So pretty, so you got we have to stay tuned to see how that storm pans out. Neither the snowfall on Wednesday nor the anticipated snowfall on Monday is expected to increase the avalanche danger all that much, but it will raise the prospects of some small wind slab avalanches that we're gonna have to be aware of. This is an example of one of those wind slab avalanches. This occurred just a couple days ago in the Valen Summit Zone on Buffalo Mountain in what's called the Silver Kuar. You can see that these small wind slab avalanches um, can entrain enough snow in long and steep continuous pitches. So we're going to wa want to watch out for wind loading and the fresh snowfall from Wednesday night and another pulse on Monday. And just be aware that these small avalanches can be dangerous in really consequential terrain. Because avalanches are breaking in surprising ways, and catching people off guard, it's important that you give steep terrain large buffers as you move through it. This video is an illustration of what's called a ruche block test. And you can see here how the slab is breaking on those buried weak layers that form during our dry spell. So that illustrates the kind of avalanche that you can trigger over the next several days. Um, avalanche is breaking two to four feet deep. There's a, still a lot of uncertainty what's gonna happen on Monday. So please make sure you check back and get your current avalanche forecast at colorado.gov slash avalanche or on the CAIC mobile app. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you here back here next week. Have a safe weekend.